Hello everyone, uh, I'm Chris Kapchus, uh, President of Chestnut Park uh, Real Estate. I'm here today to provide you with the December uh, market report for residential uh, resales in uh, the uh, Greater Toronto Area. And perhaps more importantly, a, uh, uh, a kind of a recap of what happened in the residential resale market in 2022 with a view to looking ahead as to what we can anticipate certainly in the early part of 2023 and perhaps for the uh, for the entire year i guess we can begin by starting with the uh, the obvious numbers and, and that uh, uh, is the is the kind of data that flows from what happened in December. Uh, sales were off, nothing unusual about that. We've been talking about it for the better part of six or seven months uh, on a consistent basis. Sales on a year-over-year -year basis have been dramatically lower than they were the year before, and December is no exception. Uh, uh, sales came in at almost 50% fewer than, uh, than a year ago. And we'll get into the uh, uh, explanation for why uh, that's happening. Um, average sale price uh, stayed relatively strong, coming in at one million and fifty-one thousand. Uh, so what we've seen is prices holding. And again, I'm going to get into this in a little bit uh, about what I think is going to happen to prices. But generally, have held relatively well, even though they have come down. Uh, fairly dramatically from the highs of uh, February and March, but they have held relatively well up until uh, this point. Uh, this point in time, where sales have plummeted, uh, those numbers that I've just mentioned, the the decline by almost 50 percent, there were actually 3,117 sales. We have to go back. Uh, decades almost in order to see numbers as low as uh, as the numbers produced uh, in December. Uh, and again, I'll get into uh, why I think that's happening. And it's across the board. There's uh, the there's 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 very little um, a change, regardless of the district or trading area that you're looking in from the east end all the way to the west end and then into the 905 region. All of this activity is, is basically the same. Uh, number of sales declining fairly dramatically, um, while average sale prices certainly over the last few months have held relatively, uh, relatively, um, relatively well. Um, the, the, the prices that, that I just mentioned, that average sale price of a million and 51,000, if we look at uh, various types of properties, um, average sale price for detached properties in the 416 came in at 1,627,000. Semi-detached properties, 1,152,000. Uh, the only accessible uh, property type is condominium apartments, which came in at um, 741,000. And those numbers are restricted to the city of Toronto. Uh, numbers are a little bit less if we move into the 905. Uh, so what what has happened in um, in 2022 to bring us to this position? If you look at what's happened to sales starting in uh, March of this year, and you look at average sale prices uh, in terms of what's happened since March of this year, you'll see that there has been erosion on a monthly basis. Uh, in February, which was the, the pinnacle of average sale prices, we were at 1,344,000. That's a long way from the 1,051,000 that we find ourselves in today. Uh, similarly, in, in uh, February and March, we were uh, averaging around 9,000 to 10,000 sales a month. And that has plummeted to the 3,107 sales, uh, 17 sales that I just mentioned uh, uh, at, at the beginning of this, uh, at this presentation. And why has that happened? Well, the answer is simple and obvious. Back in March of, uh, of uh, 2022, the benchmark rate that was established by the Bank of Canada was 0.25%. That benchmark rate is now 4.25%. It, it is a punishing increase that we have experienced, and it has had a direct impact on affordability. So notwithstanding the decline in average sale prices, with the rise in servicing debt, Affordability has become worse now than it was back at the beginning of uh, 2022. And 
the strong likelihood is that it's going to get worse as we move into uh, into 2023. So let's look at those numbers. In in March, 10,000 plus sales and an average sale price of 1,298,000. And again, that was at the period when the benchmark rate was at 0.25%. If we then look at what happened to uh, sales every month from March onwards, there has been a decline and a decline that has accelerated as the benchmark rate has gone up. So the correlation between the benchmark rate and the cost of financing is dramatic and we see it in these numbers and similarly as the as the sales have declined average sale prices have declined as well so as i said in february our average sale price was at 1,344,000 and now we're down to 1,051,000 and why is that the case well as I said, it's all a question of affordability. If we were to look at a representative house, um, and I'm not talking about condominiums, but a representative house uh, at say 1.3 million, it requires a household income of $275,000. Those are big numbers. And when you think of average household income in Toronto being approximately $105,000, that's quite a stretch to the amount required by a household in order to purchase a quote unquote representative house. Even in the case of a condominium apartment, which is the least expensive housing form available to buyers, uh, at 750000 and that's pretty consistent with the average sale price for condominium apartments in December, which came in at 741000 it takes a household income of $175,000. Now, aside from the household income, you still need the down payment. And in the case of a uh, non-condominium representative property, your down payment is in excess of $300,000. So to accumulate that down payment and then to be able to service the debt under the circumstances that we find ourselves in is beyond the reach of most, uh, of most buyers. So the demand is there, there's no question. And the demand will continue to build up. In, um, in 2022, 20, um, uh, there were over 700,000 new immigrants that made their way to Canada. The bulk of those immigrants, probably close to 50% of them are gonna end up in Ontario. Each one of those uh, immigrants will ultimately be a potential buyer for, um, for real estate and adding to the, uh, to the demand pressures. But unfortunately, if, if prices stay where they are and interest rates stay where they are, particularly the benchmark rate, then the only thing that can ultimately give to allow people uh, accessibility to housing is the average sale price. And so. I anticipate that if we move into 2023 and the bank is uh, the Bank of Canada is scheduled to do a uh, a review of economic circumstances uh, in um, in late January uh, it is very likely, given everything that's happening in our economy right now where the bank is going to increase the benchmark rate one more time, perhaps a quarter point, but potentially as high as a half point. That will immediately have an impact on everything that I've been talking about, but specifically affordability. That will have an impact on average sale prices. So looking into 2023, based on all the data that we have, the likelihood is that average sale prices are going to make their way down in order to try and meet, one, the demand, but the demand that's driven by affordability um, uh, in, in, in the, the economic circumstances that um, Ontario finds itself in right now and the uh, resale market in Toronto, in the greater Toronto area. That unfortunately is what's going to unfold. Hopefully, as we reach the middle part of uh, 2023 and um, inflation 
and it should, as a result of these punishing increases by the Bank of Canada, inflation should come under control. And as inflation comes under control and we no longer see any increases by the Bank of Canada, we should find ourselves in a situation where affordability starts to level off and hopefully as we approach the latter half of 2023 begins to improve and then we'll see the resale market begin to pick up. We're not going to get back to a a pandemic normal, it's going to be a completely new normal that both buyers and sellers are going to have to adjust to and particularly adjusting to expectations on the part of sellers that are not going to be the numbers that were achieved during the pandemic and sellers will find that buyers are going to be much more realistic in the uh, in the uh, in uh, new year 2023 adjusting to affordability. So that's uh, where we find ourselves. I look forward to the uh, uh, January report where we'll have a little bit more data and maybe have some uh, insight as to how all of these factors that we've discussed at this meeting are unfolding. But as it stands, that's what I think we should anticipate for 2023. So until uh, the next report, thank you very much. Stay well and stay safe.